Another lovely, soon to be frosty, moonlit night here in the collapse of everything in the fall of 2024 as we are experiencing some of the most spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful weather of my life this week in the for my final week in New York, baby, it's unbelievable weather, and the little dog and I, we have been out busting our asses today, trying to get this place shut down for the winter. Oh, man. I am enjoying a Saturday night margarita. Is this my, well, I guess, my second to the last exciting Saturday night. That would be Saturday, maybe October 19th, 2024, somewhere around there. So anyway, guys, I don't know uh, if any of you saw I was on this other Doomer channel. Well, it's not exactly a Doomer channel. I can't remember. I don't know what you would call it. can't remember the name of this channel. But there was this dude calling himself a, something like a former journalist with half a brain uh, reviewing the new Graham Hancock uh, series on Netflix. And I'm listening to this jackass talking about Graham Hancock. Uh, I'm sure we all know who Graham Hancock is. Uh, and, and, and listening to the dude for about five minutes, I figure out he has no clue what he's talking about. This absolute clueless moron, I can't remember who this was, going on and on. And he was talking about the series on Netflix from a couple of years ago, the, the old uh, Graham Hancock series. So anyway, uh, but it did listening to that clueless moron prattle on thinking he was reviewing a new series on Netflix that I think that he watched a couple of years ago. Uh, it did remind me that Graham Hancock really does have a new series on, on Netflix, uh, the, the Ancient Apocalypse uh, Season 2, where he zeroes in on the Western Hemisphere, the Americas, looking at evidence. Basically what Graham is, is trying to prove, and, and, and I am on the fence about this, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and I, it, it, this isn't going to be a hatchet job on Graham Hancock or a hero worship on Graham Hancock. Uh, I think the guy asked a lot of good questions and makes some good points. He, what he's out to try to prove uh, is, is, is his main theory is this ancient apocalypse which the scientists would call the Younger Dryas. Uh, kind of, I've heard it called a mini ice age, the Younger Dryas. Going back 12 and a half, 13,000 years ago, uh, that something happened on this planet. There was some major shock to this planet not, uh, for some reason, not worthy of being one of the um, mass extinction events in the planet. It wasn't called the sixth mass extinction. I guess it wasn't that bad, on the, uh, according to people who look at mass extinction events. But clearly something happened. Uh, if you're a scientist, you can call it the Younger Dryas. Uh, oh, oh, trying to figure out what the hell happened here uh, to this planet. 
Uh, if you're a Bible thumper, you would call it Noah's Flood. Uh, you know, all of these uh, religious and traditions and all of the, all from all over this planet. Uh, Graham Hancock has no problem uh, convincing me that, that these, usually they're flood stories. And I'm, I'm, I have not checked his facts, but he keeps talking about how in a very rapid time that sea levels rose like 400 feet at uh, the, the end of the Younger Dryas and all of these uh, climate upheavals, a huge, uh, I think it's 400 feet of sea level rise and all of the, the havoc, all, all of that uh, presented. I sit here and pick ticks off my dog while I'm, uh, while I'm ranting. No, that's just a scab. Uh, so anyway, that's is what my ancient apocalypse is what he's talking about. Uh, you know, trying to, to figure out. Now, Graham Hancock, like me, he is not an archaeologist. He's not an anthropologist. He's not a climatologist. He's a journalist out there asking questions and, and, and wanting some answers. So, uh, he zeroes in on the, uh, on the Americas. So, I, I turn on episode one, and guys, in, in the first ten minutes of this series, I had one of these epiphanies, like, uh, you know, that, 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 that clueless moron, you know, ranting about Graham Hancock yesterday, talking about how uh, his ability to enrage people by by showing them open and shut evidence that uh, you know is that how full of shit they are, and uh, Graham Hancock is a master uh, of doing this. He is completely. Uh, has shown that uh, archaeology, that the, these mainstream archaeologists are full of shit. And, and, and so I was, oops, this other, uh, the, 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 this clueless moron yesterday who didn't even know what he was uh, reviewing uh, was laughing about Graham Hancock's ability to, to, to point some obvious facts and, and how People just absolutely refuse to believe the guy. He is a whack job. He knows nothing what he's talking about. A complete whack job. And it happened to me in the first 10 minutes of episode one on season two. And uh, Guys, I don't know if I've ever said this because it doesn't happen very often. You know, the old joke, I thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. Uh, what, what Graham Hancock, not so much his research, but talking about the research of this other guy he was talking about, proved to me in, 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 in 10 minutes that the overkill hypothesis that it was humans who wiped out like 15 genre of megafauna and what is now, uh, you, you know, the U.S. and uh, North America and uh, I guess even dipping down into South America. I've never really understood how South America played into the megafaunal extinction. I, I have uh, said from day one, uh, since the, the, the first time I heard the overkill hypothesis, no shit Sherlock. That all of these animals, the, the, these big slow moving, uh, slow reproducing megafauna uh, that, that had never experienced anything like a human 
had been doing just fine over here for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. They had gone through the big ice age and all of this just fine. Humans get here uh, about, uh, the humans show up and I would always guess a, it took about 300 years. I don't know why I pulled that number. For humans, a, you know, using spears and clubs and fire or whatever, uh, obliterated uh, all of these, uh, you know, mammoths and mastodons and saber-toothed tigers and giant sloths and dire wolves and uh, on and on and on. We all know what we're talking about. You know, hearing these people, they, you know, talking about it, it wasn't humans. Humans had nothing to do with it, that it was the climate uh, that wiped, the, wiped them out and whatnot. And, and I would just roll my eyes. The animals were here. Humans showed up. The animals disappeared. Conclusion. Humans killed the megafauna, uh, at least in this megafaunal uh, extinction event uh, from, uh, you know, we'll, we'll call it 13,000 or 13,000 years ago. A and so I have been one of the biggest loudmouths about this. But what Graham Hancock shows and you need to go watch this if you're still suffering uh, from the human, from, from the uh, overkill hypothesis, what he shows is he starts out, he's in white sands in New Mexico. And what they start out with is showing literally giant sloth and mastodon prints and all of this, these footprints, and right alongside them were human footprints from about 13,000 years ago. Uh, you know, right before all of the, the mammoths and mastodons and ground sloths, you can see uh, the footprints. And, and, and I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, so for about two minutes, I was more convinced than ever. This is open and shut, mammoth footprints, giant sloth footprints, human footprints. Overkill hypothesis proved. But then they started digging deeper under the sand, getting deeper and deeper and deeper. They go down 10,000 years, 10,000 years digging through the sand and the and, 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 and all of that stuff that archaeologists do and you know, getting their little pollen grains and their carbon-14 dating, and you can literally see them physically digging deeper and deeper. And then they get down to uh, what these archaeologists uh, have, uh, with, with, with all of their, it's carbon-14, but anyway, what they do is they get down to 23,000 years ago, 10,000 years earlier than 13,000 years ago. And I'm okay with the science of this. With carbon-14, they're clearly earlier in the thing. 10,000 years, what do you see 23,000 years ago? You see what you see 13,000 years ago. You see the fucking uh, mastodon and the giant sloth and the human footprints. It's right there in, in front of your face. That humans uh, were, were on the scene 23,000 years ago. Uh, and, and I remember hearing about this a couple of years ago when they were talking about that they had uh, co a total proof that humans have been here 23,000 years ago, and I, and I don't know 
why it didn't click. Okay, humans were here 23,000 years ago. The mastodons and all the rest of these went extinct 13,000 years ago. So what that means is, is that humans and mastodons and all the rest of them coexisted for 10,000 years. And, 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 and I just have to admit, I've been fucking wrong. A anybody uh, who's claiming that human, now I'm sure humans uh, contributed to it. I, I, I'm sure it didn't make life easier. Open and shut proof that, that humans and, and all the rest of them coexisted for at least 10,000 years, and uh, I, I'm with Graham that uh, over the next few years, uh, we're going to find that humans ha have been here a hell of a lot longer than even 23,000 years. So it, 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 let's say once they prove humans have been here 53,000 years, that means humans and all of these things uh, coexisted together for 40,000 years. And then what happened 13 years ago, as I've heard other uh, people claim, uh, two things, and I've just, you know, conveniently ignored and denied the evidence. And because and, and, and I did not want to hear a threat to my worldview, uh, is when all of these other things disappeared, pretty much humans disappeared too. They disappeared uh, out of the fossil. There, 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 there's this gap. And uh, I think what Graham is suggesting, although he, he, I don't think he came right out and said it, is that when 13,000 years ago, when these folks came over the land bridge, when they got here, Humans had already been here uh, for thousands and thousands of years, but uh, th th this gap can be explained that there weren't any humans here when they got here because they went extinct at the same time that humans were, were one of the megafauna that went extinct. Uh, during the megafaunal extinction. And then humans came over here, and if you listen to my interview with, uh-oh, I forgot the guy's name. It's a great interview. I'm so sorry I can't remember it. That, you know, what we call buffalo uh, American bison came over with the humans. Moose, elk, bison, all of these things came over with the humans. Uh, and, 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 uh, and it started uh, filling up all of these niches over here that were left uh, vacant by whatever happened in the uh, ancient apocalypse. So, uh, I, I, I have no, it, as embarrassed as I am about this, to admit, uh, I no longer uh, am a supporter of the overkill hypothesis. It went out the fucking window in 10 minutes. I, you know, when I see some evidence that, that, that open and shut proves something, and it's, you know, it's like, uh, and so why don't these uh, archaeologists, it, it, it's, it's clear to me, 100% clear to me that uh, as, this, as this guy on that other channel was ranting yesterday, that Graham Hancock, it, 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 and I don't agree with everything that Graham Hancock uh, says, he has clearly pointed out how full of shit uh, all of these people b believing all of this crap, such as the overkill uh, hypothesis. And then he, he did, I mean, like one minute of the, one or two minutes of the episode, 
And I've also heard this uh, a couple of times, this theory being batted around about this uh, layer. It's about this thick, this layer of uh, all of these elements that don't make any sense being there. I think one of them might be iridium that shows up in all of these places, uh, in, in, in different places around the U.S., uh, that something happened uh, about, uh, you know, let's call it 13,000 years. Uh, that, you know, obviously not right down to the year. And what people are claiming, and uh, I was surprised that Graham didn't go off on this, but Graham is a believer in the comet hypothesis that what this layer uh, is showing that uh, that a uh, he keeps saying calling it a comet, not an asteroid. Uh, that um, the Earth was hit by a comet. In, in, and I guess in the northern U.S. or Canada, it might have been more than one big, big rock, you know, in the tail of the comet. And that's what that layer is. And that is what set off uh, the, the, this megafaunal extinction. So uh, now, 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 of course, guys, uh, if, if that had not happened, humans would have obliterated all of these mega, you know what I'm saying, uh, once more humans with better technology. So it would have happened. Humans would have come in here and killed them all. But for Graham Hancock, what I, 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 I can't play, uh, I don't want to get a copyright strike. So he he doesn't spend much time on this. He was basically saying nanny nanny boo boo. And then Graham Hancock, who is from England, uh, claims that he never believed all of this stuff, but not just talking about the one here in North America 13,000 years ago. Graham Hancock sees no evidence that humans have ever caused a megafaunal extinction. Right out of his mouth. He refuses to believe. He's from fucking England. Uh, the, the entire continent of Europe uh, had already been through uh, a megafaunal extinction uh, thousands of years uh, be, be, before the Younger Dryas. Uh, Australia, the megafaunal extinction from about 45,000 years ago. Uh, when those Save the Planet Aborigines got there and a, a, a major megafaunal extinction uh, when the Aborigines had nothing to do with the uh, Younger Dryas. And don't forget, obviously, New Zealand with the Maori going in there and, and, and like overnight uh, Madagascar. My God, you know, the, that Garden of Eden, uh, humans getting there and obliterating all of the megafauna off the face of the earth in Madagascar. Uh, there is no shortage of open and shut examples of megafaunal extinction being caused by humans. So I, 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 I want you to understand Graham Hancock has convinced me that the one that happened 13,000 years ago in what is now North America was not caused by humans. It, 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 it something happened, and, and, and it might very well have been a, com, been a comet. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't here. I didn't see it with my own eyes, so I can't report what happened 13,000 years ago. Uh, but but uh, for Graham Hancock to say some clueless moron statement that he sees no evidence that there's ever been a megafaunal extinction caused by the overkill hypothesis? Pull your head out of your ass, Graham Hancock. Okay.
and uh, a, 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 another one, and obviously I have uh, been following this for several years, but this was the best documentary I've seen on it, going down to the Amazon rainforest. Uh, it, it, it is an open and shut case, open and shut, that the Amazon rainforest wa wa was colonized by humans uh, probably for thousands and thousands of years. There, there is absolutely no denying uh, that the Amazon rainforest was home, good Lord, uh, I don't know, he was pulling the number 20 million people. Uh, I don't know where he got that number from. But, uh, you know, watch the thing, if, if you've heard about this, it, open and shut case, that this, that this whole story uh, about the Amazon and that these you know, these noble, savage, primitive Indians uh, down there in the Amazon, that the Amazon rainforest, that is the only human presence in, in the Amazon rainforest are these small little bands of, of wild, naked, savage hunter-gatherers with their little blow darts uh, shooting monkeys out of the trees. Unadulterated horseshit. I, 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 I never believed this shit. I wish I could remember as back before I became a doomer who it was. It wasn't Graham Hancock. I'm thinking it might have been, what's that fellow's name? Jeremy Rifkin or Jerry Rifkin. Anyway, I'm not even sure it's him, but some book I read years ago in my life. Uh, th this guy's theory, I mean, before he even had uh, any, any evidence, uh, before all of this evidence using uh, this LiDAR technology is the main one, uh, open and shut proof that there was, was a, a fully developed civilization going on in the Amazon rainforest thousands of years, open and shut. And what he was claiming, and it made absolutely perfect sense to me, that these Amazon Indians that we always think about when we think about Amazon Indians, what they are, are the survivors of the collapse of their civilization. And it was fairly recent. Uh, so if you want to know what it's going to look like, what humans are going to look like uh, after the collapse of civilization, you look at Amazon Indians today. They are remnant populations of survivors uh, of uh, uh, of a former civilization. Now he's not, in this case, he, he's not uh, talking totally about the ancient apocalypse. Uh, he's leaning towards uh, disease that came here from the Europeans. And he was just talking about, I was just watching this an hour ago, I guess, it was the Oriana expedition in 1542, where the first European to ever go down there reporting uh, all of these cities uh, all up and down the Amazon. Uh, that, that there were, were fully developed cities. Uh, and, and so he was either a lying sack of shit or he was reporting uh, what he was seeing, and then the Europeans, so, you know, Honky got there, and uh, the diseases that Europeans, uh, you know, introduced to the Amazon are the ones who wiped out that civilization, 
although Graham is now digging deeper and claiming even the, the Amazon civilization that disappeared just in the last, uh, well, uh, five, six hundred years since Honky got here, even they were, uh, you know, the survivors of an even more ancient civilization. So I don't know whether I'm ready to buy this. Uh, it's an interesting theory. I, I'm not completely rejecting it. But what I am 100% rejecting after looking at this evidence is that the only humans that have ever lived in the Amazon are these little raggle-taggle bands of, uh, of naked savages and their blow darts. It's bullshit. It's unadulterated horseshit. What they are are the survivors of the collapse of their, well, most recent civilization uh, in, in, in the Amazon. But one of the things that the, the, the closest I get to hopium is, I, I mean, it was just around between 1540 and 1640, around 1600, that that civilization, the more recent one, collapse and you can see how quickly nature recovers. You get rid of the humans. Uh, now Graham doesn't really get into this one, but I think it's an absolutely perfect illustration. You get rid of the humans. Get rid of the goddamn humans and nature can take care of herself. Uh, and the Amazon rainforest is a much uh, better place without humans uh, in the eyes of every one of our fellow earthlings who live there uh, today. They absolutely celebrated the collapse of, uh, 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 of the Amazon civilization. Get the goddamn humans out of there. Thank you, Honky for coming over here and, and cleaning out 20 million people out of the Amazon rainforest. And it came back. Now, you know, it, Graham gets into this thing, spends about 10 minutes on it. I am not going for the humans actually planted the Amazon rainforest, that the Amazon rainforest uh, would not be here in the form it's in, if humans literally, it's literally a garden planted by humans before their civilization collapsed, that we can thank humans for the, the Amazon rainforest, that it was basically the Amazon rainforest was savanna. It was grasslands and savanna, you know, mixed in with some trees, what, uh, you know, the, where it's heading back to because of humans. He's claiming, I don't know, on, on what, ev on pretty flimsy evidence that when humans arrived there, the uh, Amazon rainforest w w was savanna and they're the ones, you, we can thank humans for the Amazon rainforest. Uh, I am not buying that. That is the wacky, uh, crazy uh, Graham Hancock that we all love to hate or hate to love or whatever. And there's one more thing, and, and guys, I highly recommend this series, uh, is his show on Easter Island. Now, I was actually reading this long research paper just in the past few weeks, and, and, and I was just, uh, I was, I was going to do a rant on it about this new research uh, about uh, Easter Island, uh, but I just couldn't bring myself to it to do it. It's another one of these. Uh, fantasies that I have and Jared Diamond and, and, and all of the, the, the thing about, you know, the last 
you know, the the last Easter Islander or Rapa Nui, whatever they call the, uh, whatever the real name of that island was, that they had all of this flourishing civilization and they cut down the last tree. At some point, uh, someone went up to the last tree on Easter Island and cut it down and, and the, the population of Easter Island uh, collapsed after that. Graham Hancock doesn't even mention that. That the research I was just reading, and Graham just started from there, is the population of Easter Island collapsed in the 19th century in the slave raids. All of the stuff. Uh, about cutting down the last tree and all of that shit that uh, my hero Jared Diamond uh, talks about is unadulterated horseshit. Unadulterated horseshit. Never happened. Well, I mean, they, they, they might have cut, you know what I'm saying. Uh, all, all, all of that shit never happened. Uh, and and the, what uh, I guess the population uh, got down in like, I mean, just like into the, what what were they saying? Uh, the, at one point, I mean, a little over a hundred people uh, on that, on that island. And uh, I have to say, uh, I'm gonna have to let that fantasy go. That little collapse of Easter Island fantasy, it never happened. I'm not saying it was good, you know what I'm saying, but the, the what you learn, uh, that the, the, you know, the Jared Diamond school of thought and cutting down the la all of that horseshit never happened. Uh, it, it, it never happened. The uh, the overkill hypothesis over here never happened uh, in, in all of my favorite little fantasies. And, and what Graham, main thing he wanted to say about, uh, about Easter Island is that, you know, the big heads and all of that, uh, he's not believing for one minute that uh, the, 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 quote, modern residents uh, of Easter Island built those damn things. Uh, that uh, the, the, the Polynesians, who we talk about being the Eastern Islanders, they only got there like 3,000 years ago. And uh, that those damn, you know, the big heads and whatnot, uh, were already there when they got there, that somebody much earlier uh, had been there and built uh, it, it, at least a shitload of them. Maybe not every one of them, but there were a shitload of those 3,000 years ago, already buried 10 feet. Uh, that, that, that there was a, that island uh, was populated thousands and thousands of years before the Polynesians ever got there. And I have no problem believing that. And what he was doing, and I will finish up with this because I realize I'm talking to myself, is Graham Hancock, and I am 100% with this. I have thought this, I've been thinking this since I was basically in high school. I never bought the fucking land bridge story. Never bought it uh, that uh, the Amazon Indians and, and all of these people in the Caribbean and what, uh, they did not come from that the land bridge bullshit did happen 13,000 years ago. That did happen. But I am 100% uh, with, with, with Graham Hancock uh, that uh, where the first humans came from is they came by boat thousands and thousands of years before that land bridge bullshit. 
uh, you know, minimally, uh, minimally 25,000 years ago. And, and Graham says, and I agree with Graham, that uh, we're going to find out uh, as, as more and more evidence comes in that humans have been in the Western Hemisphere a hell of a lot longer than uh, than these guy than, than these Johnny Come Latelys coming across uh, this land bridge. It's not a matter of either or; it's both and. The land bridge did happen, and, and that part of the story is true. But the missing part of the story is where were all what happened to all of those people who were here thousands of years ago? I know. I'm, I've heard something that in Florida, down in these springs in Florida, they're they're finding artifacts that they're saying, uh, you know, where humans were in Florida, which is about as far from Washington State as you can get, sixteen thousand years ago, three thousand years before, uh, before they came over here. They were in Florida, these mound builders. You, they, they, you see these mounds, they're right there. Uh, where I live, in, right outside of Donellan, Florida, they're, they're these big uh, Indian mounds. Uh, all, a bunch of them in Florida. Uh, there, there's, there's a bunch of them in Georgia. Uh, going all the way up to Ohio. Uh, you know, they, 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 you know, when Honky gets here, uh, all these Indians raising corn and potatoes. Where the fuck did the corn and potatoes come from? Uh, they they didn't come across the the, the uh, land bridge. They came uh, from the south. Is where the goddamn corn and the potatoes and the tobacco, all of that shit came up from the south. Humans got here probably arriving on the coast of Peru is where they is where the first ones and then they radiated out and, and, and you know all the Peruvian stuff and then they settled the Amazon uh, all over South America then they went up Central America and, and Mexico and the Mayans and the Aztecs and uh, and they ended up in Florida. There were Indians, you know, in St. Croix when uh, Columbus got there. They didn't walk over a, a bridge into Alaska. They came by boat. Uh, I've, uh, I've never had a problem with this. And it will not surprise me one bit if they uh, were here for 100,000 uh, years. But it, it is hard to find a human anywhere uh, in what's now the U.S. Uh, between 13,000 years. And, you know, the guys who made those footprints right before the uh, ancient apocalypse uh, were, were not the, the guy, you know what I'm saying, uh, it's, a, it's different footprints. And there was this gap. Uh, when there were no humans, uh, we we were one of the megafauna that went out. So anyway, uh, I see. I have no problem uh, if, if I look at the uh, evidence uh, supported, uh, open and shut evidence. I, I don't understand. Uh, in, in 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 good lord, how people despise Graham Hancock. I know Andy the Gardener. If you're listening to this. Andy the Gardener thinks uh, Graham Hancock is a complete, total whack job crackpot. And I think probably a lot, uh, 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 I, I'm not saying that Graham Hancock doesn't come up with some crackpot shit, like saying there's no evidence that humans have ever caused a megafaunal extinction. That's absurd on the face of it. That's every bit as clueless as claiming those fucking pyramids are 2,500 years old. So, I mean, Graham Hancock has a blind spot, but, uh, 
I choose to listen to Graham Hancock and uh, and open my mind a little bit. I, you know, Graham, the only, you just got to be careful about when you're opening your mind that you don't open it so far that your damn brain falls out. Uh, but this is some pretty good stuff, but as I say, at least I can be encouraged by how quickly the Amazon rainforest uh, moved in there and erased all traces of, uh, uh, of that uh, civilization in, in, in a few hundred years. Get rid of the fucking humans and, and, and nature will prevail. The sooner that humans are gone, the better chance uh, the survivors of humans are going to, uh, you know, start cleaning up the mess that we've made. So, uh, any who's good for uh, good good for the Amazon rainforest. But uh, anyway, I am no longer suffering the delusion of the overkill hypothesis. At least for the this one that I have held so near and dear to my doomer heart, I'm going to let it and the last tree in Easter Island bullshit go out the window in the garbage where it belongs and trying to figure out, okay, if that did not happen, what the fuck did happen? Which is what Graham Hancock uh, wants to know. What the hell happened? If that didn't happen, something happened. Anyway, enough of that because I want to get back to binging on uh, season two of Ancient Apocalypse on uh, Netflix with all their new commercials while I still can. Bye, guys. Mr. Long.